Oh, hey there, guys! <laughs> Hey guys, it is me. Hello, hello, hello. Um, if you are new here, hi, my name is Cheyenne Jazzwise. I am a cosplayer, seamstress, toy collector, nerd person. But today, cosplay is the main focus of that because we are getting ready to start the next big build costume. So this is actually kind of a big build that I'm revisiting to be more accurate because I actually was planning this last year. Initially I was going to be making this before I made my wedding dress um, and then the fabrics took a while and I kind of realized that I needed to start my wedding dress sooner than I initially thought because it was pretty involved because yes, I did make my wedding dress because yes, I'm crazy. So this project got kind of put on the back burner and I've had all of the fabric for it, the patterns picked out, kind of the idea of what I wanted to do for over a year. And I decided that now is the time. If I was smart, I should have made this a couple months ago because it would have been much more topical than making pearl, but sometimes you just have to make a thing when you have to make a thing. But now I'm getting back on track and we are going to be making Princess Peach. Unsurprisingly, I think for somebody as hyper feminine as I am, I love Princess Peach. I'm absolutely Princess Peach girly. Anytime that I have to play a, a Mario Party or Mario Kart or anything, I'm always gonna pick Princess Peach. My younger brother's a big, big gamer. I'm not good at video games, but I'll play them. And so I have played many a video game with my brother where I'm like, I'm gonna be Peach. I'm not gonna do well. You want me to play Smash? with you, I'll play it, but I'm just gonna pick Peach and I'm gonna fall off the platform. That's just how it's gonna work because I'm not good at it, right? <laughs> and I've done a couple versions of Princess Peach in the past. I made her Mario Kart, like the moto suit years and years and years ago, like probably at least five years ago. And it was really fun. I actually really liked it. I don't think it, I don't if I have it anymore, I doubt it fits me anymore. Um, but it was really fun. It was a really cute one. I got to wear that Tiki Girl Con when I got to be a guest for that, which was super fun. And I've done Tennis Peach. I've done kind of like pin up -y versions. I've done Bowsette, which isn't quite Peach, but you know, kind of related. Um, fun fact, my husband is still to this day obsessed with Bowsette. He's the one person for whom the Bowsette hype will never be over. Like he has a tattoo of Bowsette on his leg that he got after the Bowsette hype. He loves Bowsette, like you guys don't understand. I had the idea for like my idea for what I wanted to do for Princess Peach for a while and I haven't had a chance to do it. So let's talk about it. So first off, I have had this pattern for years and I bought it because I have a tendency when the patterns are like a dollar at Joann's, I will just buy anything that kind of interests me. Um, and I could just make this, but that's boring. That's not interesting. I will probably be using the sleeves out of this because I've actually used the sleeve pattern for a couple of things and it is a great pattern. So I'll probably use the sleeves out of this, but our main, but the main pattern that I'm gonna be using is actually gonna be yet again, an Angela Clayton pattern. What a surprise. I've told you guys, Angela, I stand you. I love you so much. If you ever see one of these, I love you so, 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 so much. And if you ever wanted to do a collab with me in any way, shape or form, I would drop everything to work with you. But anyway, so this is McCall's M7988. It is a really great pattern. I cannot remember what time period exactly it's set in. My impulse is to say like mid 1800s-y, but I can't remember off the top of my head and the pattern doesn't particularly say. But the first time that I saw this pattern, I went, oh, this would be really good for Princess Peach because if you look that center piece, that really pretty gathered piece, it kind of reminded me of the way that they do Princess Peach's dress in like Smash. So I was like, if I took this pattern and I did this with the big puffy sleeves and added a bustle, I think I could make a really cool version of Princess Peach. The goal isn't to make like an exact replica of like her smash dress or any of her dresses in the, you know, the different games. It's kind of to like make my own version. And I just, I love things that are pink. I love things that are pretty and pink and girly. So I just kind of want to take this and use it as my, excuse to run with it and make like a pink Barbie core over the top gown. That's really all I wanna do with it, right? So these are my two base patterns that I'm gonna be using. And then in terms of fabric, like I've said, I've had the fabric for this for at least a year. Some of these pieces I think I've had for longer, but our main body fabric, 
I have this really nice, this really pretty, just like bubblegum pink satin. I got this down at the Fashion District years ago. I have about six yards of this. This is gonna be the main body. I just love this color, this really bright kind of bubblegummy pink. And then I have a piece of a lighter pink Silk du Peony, which I think is gonna be that centerpiece and any of the areas that are lighter. A lot of the time those will be white in versions of peach, but I, like I said, I just want all pink. I want a pink Barbie core bubblegum fantasy. So we have this, we have this, and then I have a hot pink du Peony that's going to be used for the bustle and the embellishments and all that. And then I have some place around here. I don't know where they are right now. I should probably find them. I have a bunch of gold filigree um, appliques that I'll probably add. I don't have my lace picked out for that yet, so I'll find some. I'm, you know, I'll tootle around on Etsy. I'll see if I can find some lace that I like when it gets to that point. But I'm not super stressed about it right now because I'm gonna cut everything out. I'm gonna figure out kind of what vibe I want. And I feel like as it starts to come together, I'll be able to kind of see what laces I want because, you know, sometimes I feel like I have everything figured out exactly for a, a project. And sometimes I kind of have like, I know that I want this and I know that I want this. And then beyond that, I will kind of figure it all out as it happens. So that's my current plan. My plan right now is just to cut everything out so that I can kind of look at everything together I can rough everything out and then I can make decisions on what levels of embellishment that I want. I will probably be putting rhinestones on it. Let's be honest, it's me, that's what I do. Yeah, so that's my current thought process with that. And it's gonna be really fun and I'm really excited to make something that's just pink and girly and bubblegummy. So let's go. All right, let's get started. So I started out by just cutting out all of my pieces. I did end up having to fudge the skirt panels very slightly. Uh, it called for four pieces. I think I had to do three and then two smaller ones, if I'm remembering right. Uh, but it definitely bit me in the butt a little bit as we later on in the project. But I got everything cut out, got everything kind of prepped before I could get anything started. Next, I had to prep the bodice pieces. I was using a piece of cotil for the center. We had to basically get the center panel all structurally ready so that the gathered fabric could go on top of it before I could sew that to any of the other pieces. I took all of that gathering. I did it by hand. In retrospect, I kind of wish that I had made this piece larger so the gathers could be a little bit more pronounced, but I was trying to follow the pattern as is, and now I know if I make this pattern again that I would like this piece to be a little bit more gathered than it ended up being. Then once the gathering was done, I could go ahead and take that gathered panel, attach it to the backing so it would be the correct size, and sew that center panel to the other pieces of the bodice. I ended up taking some hot pink piping and adding that along a couple of those seams just so it would have a nice little bit of contrast to it. And then the pattern didn't call for this, but I decided to fully line the bodice with cotille and add some spots where I could put boning into the bodice rather than having to wear a corset. Okay, so when last we left off, my hair looks crazy. My hair looks a mess. Okay, ignore that my hair looks a mess. Um, I went to brunch and I took a nap and now I just kind of have like bad head. But it's, is it like rocker messy or is it just messy messy? Whatever. Last we left off, I had gotten Peach's bodice in, not completely in one piece, but kind of in one piece. And gang, can we, I pinned the brooch on just to visualize, and can we talk about how cute this looks? I am obsessed with this combo of colors. I am absolutely obsessed. I want to add some trim over top of the gathering lines here just because looking at them I don't like seeing the line where the gathering is. I think maybe if I had machined over it it wouldn't bother me as much but I'm thinking I have some trim that's like little pearls. I'm thinking that might be pretty there. So that's something I should probably hand sew before I do anything attaching these two guys. I'm gonna have to attach the boning layer to this which also means I'm gonna be adding the lace up at the neckline because the neckline and the 
uh, bottom are gonna get sewn, it's gonna get turned inside out, and then the lacing is gonna get added to it. So those things need to happen. I can't put the sleeves on yet because the, uh, so I found this lace on Etsy that was absolutely adorable, adorable little heart-shaped lace. I got a really good deal on, I think 10 yards of it, and ordered it, didn't double check where it was coming from, it's coming from the UK, and I don't know how long it's gonna take until that gets here, which is so frustrating because I'm like having such decent momentum with this. Like I thought this was gonna take longer than it is taking. So I think what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to sew my pearl bits on because I know that I wanna do that. And if I'm gonna do that, I wanna do that before I do anything else. Let's get this, let's get this taken off for now. This by the way, is probably a 10 year old brooch. This is the brooch that I had on my Jasmine headpiece. So if you go way, way back in all my videos on here, you will see this on a headband for Princess Jasmine, but it was marketed as a Princess Peach brooch. So I'm using it as a Princess Peach brooch. And also just the size of it is nice. It's really pretty, it's really shiny. So that's what that is. That's the plan. All right, let's go. And from here, I just laid this out so that I could hand add these pearls. I just have this roll of little tiny pearls from Joann's, I think. And I had to just lay them out and then hand sew them on. It was a little tedious, but sometimes I like doing tedious tasks in a sewing project. I can just kind of turn my brain off and sew and let it happen in a way that you can't always with other projects, I feel like. From there, it was time to attach the lining to the outer. So I basically just sewed them along the bottom seam and I sewed them along the neckline. When I did the neckline seam, I sandwiched some little lace in there so it would have a nice little lace trim up at the top. Okay, so this is the place that we are leaving it for tonight. Uh, the bottom edge and that top edge are encased in their piping and you can't really see it, um, but I sandwiched a little bit of lace in there. I think that it is coming out really pretty. I think that the piping makes it pop really nice. Part of me, I can't, like in person, it looks okay, but on camera, the pearls kind of look uneven, which is very annoying. So I might have to go in and redo that or figure out what's going on there. I'll get to that to be continued because that's a uh, hand sewn on. So worst case, if I have to seam rip that off and redo it, I can. It was just a little bit easier to do while it was not connected. Um, but I am really, really happy with how it's looking. I need to press these ends. And then I think before I completely close it up, I can kind of see because this top satin is relatively thin, I can see like a lot of bunching from the seam under here. So I think I'm gonna go in and uh, serge that down pretty short, just so that I don't get as much of that. And then tomorrow, hopefully I will have time to put the lacing into the back so that I can lace that up, try it on, make sure that I'm comfortable with how everything is looking on me. Cause this dress form is my measurements, but I feel like there's always a little bit of a difference. And so hopefully that'll be my goals for the next couple of days is to do the last bits of finishing on that, get it to where I can try it on. And then I can't put the sleeves on until that other lace that I ordered gets here. And it's already shipped, so I can't cancel it now and get something else, right? So I just have to wait, which I don't wanna do, but I got to. And I like the pinks together so much. I'm so glad that I went with a pink for this centerpiece instead of a white. I think that it just looks so girly and so princessy, and I'm really excited to see this come together. But I think that's it for the night because I have to get up for work early in the morning, so peace out. Okay. So it has been maybe a week since I got Peach started. I definitely took a couple days off there. I got a little distracted. Um, the movie is out right now, which is definitely a reminder of like, oh, that's right, I was supposed to work on that. <laughs> um, this is where we are at right now, the same place that I left it. Um, right now, my current plan, I have a couple hours before I have to go pick my husband up from work in a little bit. I am going to turn this back inside out, work on trimming down 
there's this big kind of bunch of all of the excess here. So I'm gonna probably surge all of that off, turn it back over, do some pressing, and then the lace that I ordered for Peach got here a couple days ago. Actually, where is it? Look at how cute that is. Oh my gosh. Which means I can put the sleeves on at this point. So I think I am going to try in the next a uh, couple of days to get this sleeves attached, laced up in the back. I want the entire bodice to basically be done with the exception of if I decide I wanna put some rhinestones or something on it, cause I might do that because it's me. But um, I think I can do it because at this point I just need to do a little bit of tweaking on this, do some pressing. The sleeves are gonna take me basically no time. They're really simple sleeves to do. And then adding the lacing in the back is not gonna take that much time either. So we're in a pretty good spot actually. So I'm gonna take it off of the dress form and we're gonna get back to work. So to start, I just surged all that excess off just so there wouldn't be as much bulk on the inside. And I also gave that a good press just to make sure that everything was laying the way that I wanted it to. And then it was time to start getting work on the sleeves done. I started by making my sleeve bands, just taking those, surging them, putting them together so that I could attach the lace. It was just easier to base the lace on before I tried to attach them to the sleeves themselves. I added some interfacing to the sleeve bodies themselves so that they would kind of have the stiffness I wanted. And then I gathered that down and attached it to my sleeve band with the lace that you just saw me put together. Then it was just a matter of gathering them and attaching them to the bodice. It was a tiny bit tricky. I did have to fudge it because they're from two different patterns, but because it was just a big gathered sleeve, I basically just did the gathers more than I would have otherwise, if that makes any sense. Next up, I turned in the back of the bodice so I could make the last of my boning channels. Uh, we're just using cable ties for this because we're not trying to do a lot of waist reduction. We're just trying to give a little bit of structure so cable ties work perfectly for this purpose and they're way cheaper than if I was gonna buy steel boning. And then I took it over to the grommet press and set grommets, I believe every two inches. I wanted them to go the whole way down the back of the bodice. One, because then it's easy to put on and two, because I just think it looks nice and kind of fairy tale-y. Okay, so I know it looks very funny with my cargo pants, but this is the first try on. It's so, cute i feel so cute and girly and like barbie core it's i'm so happy with it right now like it's fully this basically other than how i'm gonna attach it to the skirt it's literally basically fully done like it laces up in the back it closes the whole way so i don't have to worry about any kind of modesty issues um it's giving me enough support that i don't have to wear corset or anything underneath i'm feeling really comfortable with where it is my only thing that I want to fix is looking at it on me. I think I sewed the pearls on crooked. Like if you look at it, these two rows are fine. This one is slanted a little bit, which I probably did the basting slanted or put it in slanted somehow. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to take that and, and tweak that to fix that. But other than that, Look at how stinking cute it is. And I'm gonna make a choker, I think. So we'll have, cause Peach's dress goes the whole way up, but I think that little bit of just like collarbone just makes it feel a lot more open and I don't feel as like suffocated, but I do think I'm gonna make a little choker. I'll use maybe the dark pink. I am really, really happy with it. The sleeves look perfect. The it's, I could, I'm so happy. I'm so happy with this. Oh my gosh. Hey, hi gang. Uh, greetings and salutations. So it is basically the end of May and Peach has been sitting in her half finished form on my dress form, judging me for since like the middle of April. Life got insanely busy all at once. It was really crazy. And uh, Peach just kind of got left by the wayside. So 
I actually have a rare day off during the week for once, uh, so I am actually planning to just get a bunch of work done on Peach today, hopefully. I have the skirt pieces, they're currently pinned up on my mannequin. So the thought process today is to take those off the dress form, sew those all together. I want to at least get it to the point where it's got a waistband. Ideally, I would love to at least start draping the bustle pieces today, but I don't know. We'll see how far I get. That's what we're going to try and do. So let's take everything off the dress form and head over to the machine and get started. And then it was time to start the skirt. Uh, obviously it's bigger, but I'm basically doing a version of the big panel skirt that I make like a 50s skirt out of all the time. There's very little difference between that and this. It's just a bunch of big panels that I'm sewing together, that I'm gathering, and that I'm attaching to a waistband. Real simple, real easy peasy. And then definitely made sure that I made some time to press these seams out because this fabric is a little finicky. If I don't press it, you will absolutely be able to see it and it will absolutely be. That's the main thing that can make a costume look homemade is if you don't press your seams, honestly. Then from there, it just had to get attached to a waistband and I ended up adding a zipper to the back just because it was going to make it easier to get in and out of it. skirt is in one piece. I haven't close the back up at all yet because it's going to make my life easier to hem it and add a pink band to the bottom and all that kind of stuff um, with it flat and also because I haven't decided if I'm going to put a zipper into it in the back or if I'm just going to leave it because there is going to be an overskirt right so it might not be necessary I haven't decided yet but can we just take a moment to talk about the shape and the silhouette of this and the like pink princess like barbie core fantasy of it i am so excited to wear this like live my full pretty princess life like exactly what i wanted to look like when i was three years old like fully that so next up is going to be adding the overskirt uh peach has it depends on the depiction sometimes it's small sometimes it's bigger um, but she has those little kind of side bustle overskirt situations and I kind of wanted to make it more of an overskirt because I have that beautiful hot pink fabric and I really like to use it. And also just because I think that it will help with the kind of like uh, historical bustly feel of the whole thing. That's my thought process. Now, initially I was going to just draft this by hand and then I just, I don't like drafting. I don't like drafting from scratch. I really don't like doing it and I've kind of looked through all of my patterns that I already have because I was like maybe I have something that I could use as a base and I could just cut it out and then do any tweaks I want to make and I remembered that I have this guy so this is I actually have like three copies of this pattern this is the simplicity sewing pattern that they made when the live action Cinderella was coming out there's a part of me that would love to make this dress someday but I I don't have any particular need to however if you'll look here, the B view is for like a version of the fairy godmother. And these bustles on the sides of this, this overskirt is so pretty and so like ethereal and the shape is exactly what I want. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the overskirt piece from this and use that as my base, cut that out, pin it, make sure that it looks the way that I want, make any changes I wanna make. So that's the plan. And then it was time to get the bustle started. So we just cut it out, really simple. It was actually a really simple pattern piece. It was basically a really large circle. The way that it got attached to the waistband did get me a little confused at first because you attached the larger piece rather than the smaller piece, which is what you probably would think. But once I figured out what it was asking me to do, it was really simple, thankfully. And because I wanted to put a zipper in the back of the skirt, instead of attaching it to the waistband like the pattern called for, I actually added this to a piece of ribbon so that it could basically be a detachable piece that would go over the skirt. Uh, it was a little complicated to figure out how to do, but I think it's gonna make my life so much easier in the long run. 
Then I added a little bit of that same heart lace from the sleeves to the hem, because it'll make everything look nice and cohesive and like one kind of unified garment. And also because it's cute and I have some. So this is our first full try on. I can't get the whole thing in frame because it's big, uh, but for the most part, I am really, really happy. I still have to go in and tweak the pearl trim up here. That's something that I know I need to do. I keep remembering, especially every time I put it on, because it's much more obvious on my body, I feel like, than it is on the form. But whatever, I am really, really happy with the way that the bustle came together. I think that the bow added to that looks really good. I'm kind of getting to live like my 1860s big puffy ball gown fantasy in a way that has absolutely nothing to do with weird civil war people. And that makes me really happy because I've always loved the aesthetic of 1860s fashion. Uh, but as a brown person, that's kind of fraught. <laughs> <laughs> the bustle snaps into the bodice up here, so that's all one piece. I'm really happy with that. I think I'm gonna add one more snap. I'm gonna add a snap in here to the waistband here, just so that this stays in one piece. And I am noticing that these little guys are trying to get away. So I might switch those for slightly stronger snaps. I haven't decided, but I'm really happy with the sleeves. I'm really happy with the bodice. I'm really, really happy with the bustle and the shape of everything. The only thing that I am not 100% on is, and it's kind of my own fault, because this hoop is so big um, and I did a paneled skirt and I kind of fudged the skirt panels a little bit, at the bottom, I don't know if you can see, it's kind of barely getting over the hoop and you can kind of see it stretched across the hoop in the back. But I think I have a plan for that. So the, Bottom of Princess Peach's dress in like her traditional form has a band across it of the darker pink, right? So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find either this dupioni again or probably just a similar dupioni because if I recall correctly, this came took forever to get here. So I'm gonna try to find something that's kind of a similar color and add a big ruffle to the bottom and like really flounce it out. And I think that that'll help kind of camouflage the fact that it's having some trouble getting the whole way over. I also have a decent amount of the heart lace left. So I'm thinking between that and putting a big band around the bottom that I will be able to kind of disguise the problem there is just, this is one of the prettier pieces that I have made, I think, in my opinion. Like it's not necessarily the flashiest thing that I've ever done, but the way that everything has come together on it has been, it feels really complete and really, I'm really happy with the construction of it in a way that I haven't always been about my costume pieces. And I th honestly think it is because I took my time with this in a way that I have not always in the past taken time with builds because I was always like, I have to get something out every month, go, 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 go. And slowing down, taking my time, giving myself the room to breathe and to work on pieces as I feel is appropriate and taking the time and giving them the love and care that they need, I feel like it has absolutely been worth it. And I feel like this is really proof of that. Um, I actually had this in the background while I was doing a job interview the other day and uh, the person I was interviewing with commented on it, like positively, they said, oh, that looks really beautiful. So, you know. But yeah, I'm really happy. This looks beautiful. I made this, can you believe that? All right, it's after midnight. I gotta go to bed. I gotta get all this off. All right. Hey, so we are halfway through June and Peach still isn't done. I feel like I'm in kind of like limbo right now with it. The dress is basically put together with the exception of because of the way the bottom of the skirt is laying around the hoop, I really wanna put a ruffle along the bottom to kind of hide that it's a little too tight for the hoop, right? And I tried to see if I could find a fabric that was a close enough match to my darker pink um, that was a local supplier, but I couldn't. So I ended up having to order some fabric from my original supplier for that dark pink fabric. Um, so it is on its way 
from India and I ordered it like a week and a half, two weeks ago. Sitting and thinking about it today on my day off, there are absolutely some small detail bits that I can be doing in the meantime to just kind of get everything else ready. So first off, I still need to tweak that line of pearls along the bodice, so I can absolutely do that. Second off, I can hem the bottom of the skirt, so I at least have the placement figured out by the time that fabric gets here. And I'm also thinking about making a choker to just a little one. I have a little bit of the scrap of the dark pink, not enough for my ruffle, but enough that I could make a nice little choker, put some lace on it. Um, I have some little blue beads, so I could do that. I still need gloves. So the point is, I do have a bunch of little tasks that I can do and that I can work on. So I'm gonna try to get as many of those done today as I can, just so I can kind of still have some momentum going on this costume. All right, so first up, I decided to make my little choker. I literally just took a scrap piece of that hot pink fabric and turned both ends under so that it would look nice and finished on the top. And then I still had some of that same pearl trim, so I hand sewed a little bit of that on, and I had a little bit of a blue gem that I could put in the center just to make everything look nice and cohesive. Then it was time to cut out and sew the gloves. I used the same glove pattern I use pretty much all the time, which is uh, Yaya Han has a pattern for McCall's that's like a gloves and boot covers pack. And I use that for pretty much everything. Sometimes I'll modify them, but in this case, I just needed long gloves. So I just use the long gloves pattern. I actually used the last of the glitter velvet that I had from my Disco Princess Leia. So I felt like it would look kind of magical. And also because I already had it, and then I wouldn't have to go buy anything else. And that's always nice when we can do it, you know. Then for the hem, I got my dress form to the same height that I would be with my shoes on, pinned it along the bottom, and just did a real quick and dirty hem on this. I didn't do horse hair, I didn't do anything crazy because I know that I'm going to put a ruffle around it. So really, I just need to get the excess length off here. And then I also found this really beautiful gold filigree applique um, at Joann's. I think it was one of the Yaya Han collection ones, but I can't remember. And I decided that I would take that and sew it on just so that it would frame the gem in the center. I just felt like it would look really pretty and kind of a little bit more ornate, a little bit more special. Okay, so the dress is basically done and I try everything on and the skirt is kind of straining over the end of the hoop a little bit because I didn't have quite enough fabric for what I was trying to do. I was being a little ambitious about it. Um, and I was not super happy with the way that it was looking. So I decided I'm going to add a ruffle to the bottom because a lot of classic Princess Peach looks, she has kind of a flounce that's a contrast color at the bottom of her dress anyway. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I have my last little bit of that bright, bright bubblegum pink that I love, but I don't have enough to do what I wanna do. I have some very small scrap pieces that could be used to make like another bow or something at most, not a big ruffle at all. And I say, no problem, I know what fabric it is, it's a silk dupioni, I am going to look and see what I can find online to kind of match it. I'm looking for, initially I was looking for a shop here in the US because I wanted to get here pretty quickly because I wanted this done and I ordered some fabric, it got here, and it did not match, did not match. The pinks did not match. I actually tried to dye this to get it slightly closer, um, but it initially was even more off, and that was driving me nuts, right? So I bit the bullet and I said, okay, I'm just gonna have to reorder it from that original supplier, even though it'll take a while to get here. I go in, I look through my Etsy purchases, find the fabric that I ordered, and order that, pay for express shipping so that it will get to me on time. It comes, it's an even worse match. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. It was the same fabric. <coughs> so I message the seller, I go, hey, how are these this different? I'm really confused. And they're like, that's really weird. Let's look into it. Um, it looks like you were sent the same thing for both. And then I look through my whole correspondence with this Etsy seller and I notice that when I did that original order, they had messaged me and said, hey, we don't have enough of your fabric that you purchased, but we have this other color. We can send you what we have of 
the color you ordered or we can send you the amount you want of this different color. And I said, I would like to do another, like I would like to do this different color. That's what I said. So I didn't remember that because it had been a year. And so I just ordered the same thing and I went, okay, well, you know what? That's on me. That's annoying, whatever. So I go in and I go and find the fabric that I did initially, that I did ask for. And I just order more of that. I'm like, whatever, that's on me. I'll eat that, whatever. So that just got here. It's still not the same pink. Ah! Now granted, I know it's been a year since these productions, they're probably completely different dye lots. This can happen. Um, and I'm fighting the urge to completely become a complete lunatic about it. Um, because the pinks not being the exact same is going to drive me crazy. But the more I thought about it, oh, I also bought some ribbon in there someplace that didn't look right either. I'm like, you know what, fine. So at this point, I'm kind of like, I am not going to become too much more of a lunatic about this because it's a bottom frill. Nobody but me is going to be that disturbed that it's not the exact same pink. In pictures, I can always try and see if I can edit it to match it a little bit better as well. Um, so I'm just gonna work with one of the pinks that I have. So look through, I looked through all the pinks. Remember, this is the pink we're trying to match. So I have this, which to me is too kind of salmon-y. I have this, which has the same kind of purpley pink energy, but it's way too purple. And I have this one that I dyed. Of the three, I think this one is the closest match. It is not perfect. It's going to drive me insane. But at this point, I think I need to just let it go. Um, there's a saying that uh, true art is never finished, it's just abandoned. And I have other things that I would like to make and I really wanna shoot this. I've worked really hard on it. Other than this, I'm really, really happy with it. So we're, we're using this. And that's gonna be it. Cause I'm done at this point. I just want this piece finished. So we're gonna go do that. That's the plan. Say a prayer for me. All right. Goodbye. Okay, let's get this freaking ruffle done. I measured from the spot where the strain was starting to come in on the hoop and made sure that the ruffle would be the right size for that and literally just cut some big strips, just literally just zoom, zoom, zoomed across, surged them all together, put them all in one piece, I ended up adding some horsehair to the bottom so that it would give the ruffle a little bit more flounce. And I had enough of my heart shaped lace that I added some of that to the bottom as well, just cause I thought it would help again, make everything a little bit more coherent and kind of disguise that it didn't match, if that makes any sense. And then from there, I just had to attach it to the dress itself. Again, really simple, really basic, just a straight stitch the whole way around so that it would all kind of be in one piece. All right, good morning, comrades. It is 5.12 in the a.m. I look like a boiled egg. And it's time to get into the full Princess Peach getup to go and shoot at the Venetian before there's a bajillion people there and before it gets so hot that I will roast immediately like a rotisserie chicken. Uh, I feel like I look like a rotisserie chicken right now. So I already did my makeup. And you can see it's mostly Trixie Cosmetics. I look beautiful. Um, I have all of my costume pieces out here in the living room because it's gonna be easier than trying to squeeze through a bunch of extra doorways. I have my husband on like standby. He's having his breakfast, but I will probably end up needing his help a little bit, but we're gonna get into all the pieces. So first off, I'm gonna put the shoes on. Shoes first, always easier. I definitely feel like when I wear this costume to cons and stuff, I will probably wear a more comfy shoe um, because these aren't uncomfortable, but they would be a lot for a con day. I low key think that in terms of height, I could get away with wearing my Crocs underneath my Princess Peach gown, which would be kind of funny. So I might do that in the future. Okay, so we've got our shoes on. Now we're gonna start getting the costume on. I will say I should have a chemise on under this dress just to kind of protect it from like sweat and stuff. 
but the one that I have isn't really gonna fit under it. So in the future, if I'm gonna wear this to like a longer event, like a con or something, I will end up making a chemise to put on. Um, but I'm only gonna be in it for a couple of hours today. Like literally, I figure shooting will take one, maybe two hours if we get really crazy. And then we're gonna come home, I'm gonna take it off, probably take a nap for a little bit. We'll see how it goes, right? But we're doing the hoop first. Okay, so the hoop is on. Next layer is the canvas overskirt. This one just kind of smooths out everything underneath. This one also ties in the front, so that's pretty easy. So I look like a circus tent now, <laughs> a little bit, but that's okay. I like circus tents, I like clowns and stuff. I'm actually getting a clown tattoo next week. I'm very excited. All right. And then third is the tulle petticoat. For fluffiness reasons. Which, fun fact, I've worn this for several costumes and on my wedding day. It still doesn't actually have a proper closure. I just put a safety pin on it because I'm lazy. <laughs> you have to pick your battles, you know? Next step is our bum pad. So that we get that really kind of bustly silhouette. All right, and then we have the skirt. I'm really glad with the way that I did the bustle of that I could just put a zipper in it. It makes my life so much easier. I will probably need to call the husband in in a second just to get it over the back of the hoop because it's very hard for me to do that by myself, but I could put it on by myself, so, you know. And I mean, back in the day when women dressed like this, they had like 14 handmaidens and stuff, so. I guess my husband's my handmaiden today. Yay. For those of you who have not seen him because he's not been in a video in a very, very long time, this is my husband. Hello. My long suffering husband. I don't know why he tolerates me. But he does. Because you're cute. Aww. <laughs> All right, and you can't see the hoop in the back now? Like, just... There we go. Okay, there you go. Okay. So we'll just keep an eye on that when we're shooting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the skirt is on. I look even more like a circus tent. <laughs> Next up is the bodice. Um, I do think in the future I might add an extra snap here in the front so that I can snap the bodice and the skirt together so that they'll be really like unified. But I didn't and it's not gonna matter for pictures because I can go in and like adjust between shots. Not that worried about it for today. All right, can I get a lace? Uh-huh. Yay. Back again, husband. He's the best. And he's just gonna go through and lace the last couple because it's just easier to do if the last couple of eyelids aren't laced and then will you just lace it where to where it's like closed? Sure. Yeah, and it should close all the way on me. I mean it where yeah. it should do that. Mm -hmm. Or at least mostly. If there's a tiny gap, I mean there's also gonna be a big long wig over it. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> alright, so next up. We have the bustle piece. Okay, so this is how this works. So this has snaps, and then the snaps correspond to snaps on the inside here. Okay. So I can do the front ones, I cannot do the back ones myself. All right. So I will need your assistance with that as well. Makes sense. Okay. But if I only do the front ones, it comes undone really easy. So that's why I need to do But you see why I insisted we get up so much earlier than uh, when we were needed to be there. Oh, this yeah. Is a production to put on. And I didn't think about that part when I was making it because I was doing it on the dress form. Mm -hmm. And then I went to put it on for the first time and went, oh, I can't do that. But like I said, back in the day, ladies had a bunch of handmaids and stuff. Well, really, this time period, mm. women had slaves because this is kind of 1860s inspired. But that's why we're doing an 1860s inspired silhouette that is not a historical reproduction piece because that's weird. People who reproduce 1860s stuff are weird. Anyway, or at least some people, not everybody. 
lot of 1860s reenactors freaking out. Anyway. Oh, it looks so pretty though. Oh. This may be one of the coolest things I've ever made, you guys. If I do say so myself, this is beautiful. This is, this is art. You can't tell me this is not art. There you go. Okay. There you go. So we, oh. <laughs> so we have the bow. I'm gonna wait to put the gloves on um, until the last second because then they're white. I don't want to touch anything with those. I'm gonna put my choker on and my wig on and then we're gonna head out. So, yeah. See you later. And finally, after months and months of work, I present to you my finished Princess Peach. Guys, I am so, so happy with this. I'm so proud of the way it came out. It was absolutely worth getting up so early in the morning because there were very few people in the parts of the casino that I wanted to shoot in. So we really had free reign and it just looked so magical. I felt so princessy and beautiful. This is a costume that I've wanted to make for a while and I think that this costume was really, really my validation for the ways that I've been trying to change the way that I make costumes and the way that I think about making costumes. It definitely took a lot longer to make than it's taken for me to make costumes in the past, but I felt so much pride over every single aspect of how it looks, how it photographed, how the wig looked, how everything was finished. I felt so much more like, yeah, I made this. I feel really proud of myself. I feel really happy. If I wanted to bring this into cosplay competition, there's not an inch on it that I would feel bad about a judge looking at. And I feel so proud and so satisfied with what I put together. I'm so proud of these pictures, guys. You have no idea. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, the links to everywhere else you can find me will be down in the description. And I'm gonna try to make videos like this a little bit more regularly. I feel like I'm really starting to get back into the groove of things. So if you have any topics you'd be interested in hearing me talk about, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will be super excited to add them to my list. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.